Okay, we're gonna tie a fly here and tell a story. So I may not do a very good job of describing how to tie the fly, but I'm gonna describe the story. So let's get started here. Okay, we're gonna tie a chartreuse comet. Nothing fancy about this at all. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you a story about my dear friend, Larry Collins who I was fishing with down on. Now, the problem is here, I'm gonna, uh, I'm probably gonna get lost um, and have to think about what I'm doing, but that's all right. So I was fishing with Larry back in 2003 and 2004 down on the Rogue River. And uh, gosh, it must have been, I th I'm thinking it was probably September pretty warm sunny day this was definitely t-shirt weather and uh, by the way this was a really good fly to fish there and Larry's just he's a super guy he's not with us anymore uh, he was 76 when he passed and uh, anyway so, so there we were and I was I was really new to this salmon fishing with uh, fly fishing for Chinook and um, so I'm anchored in the hog line one day and it's about 11 o'clock in the morning and everybody's in the hog line and all the good spots are taken. And 11 o'clock here and, and nobody been catching anything. Here comes Larry driving down the gravel bar in his, uh, towing his, uh, he's, he's, he's got a pickup truck with a camper shell on it and he's towing his bass boat. Comes down, parks along side the hole, and he's looking. He gets out. He's looking at us all, and pretty soon a fish rolls. And the fish rolls over way on river left, and none of us were impressed because we all knew that that's what we call the salmon highway. And fish might roll over there, but you couldn't catch them because they're just moving past. So nobody thought any, anything about it. So then another fish rolled. So Larry gets back in his truck, and drives all the way down to the bottom of the gravel bar, gets himself turned around, drives back up, puts his boat in, comes down, and he sets up way over there on river left, and uh, puts his buoy out. I bet you Larry I think it was his first cast. Maybe it wasn't, but let's just say it was. Bottom line is Larry hooked and landed two Chinook just that fast over there where none of us bothered to, you know, we didn't want to fish over there because we knew by conventional wisdom it, it, fish weren't gonna bite over there. So Larry hauled out, <clears throat> got in his pickup, Load his fish up, got in his pickup, load his boat, and went uh, headed back up. And uh, I wound up taking out. I just rode over to shallow water, dropped my anchor, and uh, walked up to where Larry had parked back in the bushes, the brush, I should say. Um, and Larry invited me in. We, we didn't really know each other very well at that point. He invited me in, um, had the windows open, it's quite warm. He had a pot of salmon stew, or salmon chowder, pardon me, salmon chowder. And he was having lunch and uh, he offered me, to, he invited me to join him. Of course I did. And we talked about all sorts of things. Family talked about salmon fishing, of course. And uh, Larry was a veteran of the Central California Coastal Chinook Fishery. Bill Shad, Ted Lindner, Al Perryman. Um, he told me about some of the dirty deeds that they it was competitive, very competitive fishing in those days. 
and not all of the competition was gentlemanly. Um, I was really happy that I got a chance to know Larry. At one point, while we were sitting there, um, he had a big nasty cut on his index finger and he got out a tube of super glue and he dabbed some super glue on there and he held the cut tight while we were talking. We talked about Daiichi 1530 hooks and um, leaders we'd use and a couple hours went by and I drifted back to fish. Larry took a nap. I didn't hook a fish all afternoon but I really I'm, I'm grateful for my time with Larry. So there is a, a fly, a chartreuse comet, very, very similar. The only difference was that I would have tied that fly on a Daiichi 1530, probably a size 6. This is a Gamagatsu Glowbug hook in a size 2. Uh, little, it, it's, it, the shank is no longer, but the, um, but the gap of the hook is a little bit wider, so I think it will hook fish a little bit better. So thank you for joining me and uh, listening to my story about Larry Collins.